Hello everybody and welcome to this DSA Mastery course and in this video uh, we, are, we are going to talk about a recursion with arrays and I and we are doing a lot of problems based upon recursion as recursion is a very important topic in terms of interview and it's in, in, not in terms of interview I, I can say that in terms of understanding DSA okay or uh, solving a problem because I think it's a very unique thing that we are solving a problem by dividing a bigger problem into smaller smaller problem okay so let's without wasting time let's get into it and try to solve a problem okay so let's say we are given one problem we are given a problem which is a check if the array is sorted or not a recursively so how do we do that so first of all let's say we have an error two one six seven and eight so this is our n this is our array arr so this is our array this is our array ARR and we, we have to check whether the, this array is sorted or not by using a recursion. So what we are what in recursion we are doing we are dividing n into n minus 1 problem means into bigger problem to the smaller problem to a smaller problem. Yes or no? Yes. Okay, so in this case, what we are going to do, we are going to divide this array into small problem. Means we are going to divide ARR to ARR minus 1. And we check on this and then again the function is, will be called again, again, again. So, if you call ARR minus 1, it will leave to the first index and it will check this one. And again, the function will calling, 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 and then it will be a good way. Okay, so let's start coding the coding and the things, and then you'll get to know uh, more in a better and intuitive way. Okay, so I have my uh, all the things ready here. So whatever writes public, I will make a function static. It's a boolean because it will return whether the array is sorted or not. Boolean check array check array and then it, it, it will take an array so let's write arr means that it will take an array and then what it will do it will the base case so let's talk about a base case so what is the base case here is that let's say we have uh, an array we have an array of let's say this we have an array this is index which is a one element which is a one element so it is already sorted so it is sorted so the simplest case we can think of it as a if the length of the array is equal to equals to 1 then we, have, we can say that the array is sorted okay so if the arr dot length is equal equals to 1 then we can say return then we can say return true okay okay now what we have planned what we have planned is that Let's say this is our array 2, 6, 7, 8, and 9. This is our array. And we have planned to divide this into a smaller problem. Means n minus 1. So we will store this is our input. This is our input. And we, we want a we, we want n minus 1. Means a smaller input. Smaller input. So we'll leave 2 and we'll take this one. And store them into new variable. Into new, sorry, array. Into new array. So and then we will again store this array into new array then again we will store this array then this array and then it will be we will strain that we will do the dry run and then you will understand the things better okay so this is how we have to do so we will make an array and small input this is an array new int and of the length n minus 1 means we are storing the n minus 1 means smaller input in here okay of the length okay so now we have specified our array now what how do we put the elements in the array so let's say we have us uh, this uh, array means input we have this and we want to take this so we have uh, one two three okay so how to put this into this this into this this into this and this into this so for that we have to write a for a loop we have to write write a for a loop mapping the things okay so let's try the for loop here. Uh, okay. So for I will again int i i equals to not one. It's one. I is smaller than or equals to input dot arr dot length 
and then I plus plus. Okay, so for writing for a loop for int i equals to one i is smaller than r smaller than arr dot length i plus plus okay this is how we have to and then what we have to do we have to map our the ints bigger array into a smaller array leaving the first element so how do we do that for doing that we will we will put a small input so how do we do that so for, for that a small input i minus 1 i minus 1 means in the place of i minus 1 we are putting the i into that okay so arr i okay so in this code what it does it puts that into a small array okay into this now we have mapped our element now now we'll call our recursive now we'll call our recursive call so and store it into a small answer so small input and store it in check sorted i will call check array check array and then i will oops whatever it is array and then in that i will give our small input input equals to i okay small input And again, uh, this let's write a small answer. Okay, so what does it do? It divides into smaller, smaller, smaller until we reach the base case, and again the same thing happening again. So what it will do? So what it will do? It will. It will. Let's say we have an array one, two, three, four, five. So it will give this array into the small input. Is into the small input then this array into the small input this array into small input this array and this is the base case this is the base case and then it will go further further and then it will be okay but we have not written that how do we returning the elements okay so how do we return the elements if if this doesn't does does not do the things very much good if this bully small answer check array this this is not true this is not true means this is not true this is not true then we'll return false but we have to check the first two elements like this one like this one and this one like the first this element okay so how do we do that for that we will check the first two element of an array so if the arr zero is smaller than r equals to r equals to the input one means we have to solve in ascending order so again oops it should be arr arr okay we are going to return true else false else return false okay so it is checking the first two elements it is checking the first two elements and then it is going good to go so i've written a code okay so this this is much we have to write a code and let's understand let's do the dry run and you will be understanding the things better from now okay so this is our board here let me move to this side so that okay so let's say let's do the dry run and let's say you are given an array let's say two six and seven okay so this is our array so this is our array which is which we which we have given in the input so now it checks the base case it checks the base case if the length of this array equals equal, equal, equal equals to one no it's not so we will go further what we will do we will divide we will divide into smaller input so we'll divide this into smaller input so the smaller input would be six and seven now our arr is this now it will do now we have a six and seven as a smaller input okay 
Now again we check the base case for this it is not then we will proceed further and then we will check for and then we will then then we will remove this one and then this will be left so the smaller input would be 7 so now we have 7 now you can see here that we have now it matches the base case like how it matches the base case means the length of this length of this array is equal equals to 1 so it will return true to whom to whom who is calling to this who is call who, who wants 7 so it will return true to them now what it will do it will check the zeroth element and the first element so you can see here this is okay means 6 is smaller than or equals to 7 so it's so it's okay so this line of code does the same this line of code checks two elements in here checks two elements now it is okay so it will return true to him now it returns true now it will check this two means zero and one now two is smaller than six so it will return true to whom to the main and then we have got our answer so this is the dry run for our thing here and dry run always help us always help us to achieve our answer to to understand it more intuitively so let's make an array so one comma two comma three and let's uh, let system dot out dot print i will put the what's the name of the array miss function check array uh one, one fun fact that i if, if i were working on a object oriented programming if i'm making a class as in java i should forget on the name of the java or the function i have made as an assignment so that's that's the fun fact that i used to forget about the function names so here array and now if i save this run this okay you can see here it is returning true it means the array is sorted. okay so let's let's do one one more dry run and then we'll wrap up this video okay let's do one more dry run and then we will wrap up this video let's say we have a uh, two nine and ten let's say 10 11 till 11 so we have our array which is this one which is of four elements which is our length four okay now it will check the base case no it's not because n equals not equals to one uh, so the, it will it will go on to the smaller input so here the smaller input is 9 10 and 11 means the living are the first element living are the first element so now it now the n equals to 10 11 okay so now we have an n equals to this now again this is not the base case this is not in the base case so now it will the now it will go in the smaller input the smaller input is 10 and 11 okay so the smaller input is 10 and 11 10 and 11 okay so this is already so now it is an, again not a base case so the smaller input would be the 11 now the our n equals to 11 now it will check if the and now it is the base case now it is the base case means the n equals to 1 now it will return true to whom it is calling so to check the 10 or 11 it will check 10 or 11 okay it will check 10 or 11 it is again true it will return true to this now it will check this 0 and 1 it will return true and then it will check this and this and then return true i'm leaving you uh let's say you take uh let's say this one the question 9 10 5 and 2 and do the dry run by yourself 9 10 and 5 2 and do the dry run by yourself and you will be understanding it more better way than i teach okay so what if it is called now how it works again i'm for from the code point of view it is just mapping this is mapping and it is calling the same function onto the small input times and times and times because this wants the this this wants the this means small problem wants the small problem or the same small problem okay so this this is how all the all this works and i hope that you got better intuition about our recursion with arrays please all please take a look at our notes and after this video we'll be understanding it more better way
Okay, the, the notes will be in the description down box below when I hope that you got better intuition about all those things till now when you question Pat. If not, please feel free to DM me on LinkedIn or Instagram. I'll be happy or comment down below. I'll be happy to assist you. Okay, so if you want me a uh, uh, one to one men mentoring, please DM me on LinkedIn. I will be happy to assist you. Okay, so thank you for seeing this video. I'll be catching for the next video. Till then, bye bye.